Andrew, as I mentioned, my name is Peter. I'm the Missionary Gamer. I live stream on Twitch. And we ask people some questions in game. Would it be okay if I asked you a question? Go for it. I like this type of thing. <laughs> awesome. So, how many people? How many people in your live, by the way? Uh, we got 13 people. Yeah, we try to keep it family friendly. We understand it's kind of hard in this game, but we do try. Here's the first question for you. What do you think happens after we die? Not not in the game, but in the real world. I I really like this question because uh, I'm a little congested, but um, I think it's like how we were before we were born. Like, do you remember being? like alive when you were born it, it's just nothing it's it's nothing I, i'm not atheist but i also don't believe in religion but okay I, I don't think there's anything i think we just we think we just die that's it the question is let's say if there is a heaven do you think you're good enough to go there probably not <laughs> oh wow right off the bat right off the, so you so you don't think you're a good person i think i am i, I think i have a good heart but like okay okay i feel like to get into heaven you have to be absolutely perfect well can i ask you a couple questions then let's make sure in your lifetime how many lies do you think you've told probably like i don't know thousands thousands <laughs> okay thousands what would that make you then a, a pretty pretty big fat liar have you ever stolen anything yeah so what do you call somebody who steals things thief so then what would that make you thief it would make you a lying thief. See how these things start adding together? Oh. <laughs> right? Have you ever blasphemed God's name? Ever used his name in vain? Probably today alone. Probably yeah. many times. I, I okay. work construction, so. Last question. Jesus Christ said, you know it's said of old that you shouldn't commit adultery. But I tell you, even if you've looked at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at another person with lust? Yeah. Now this isn't me judging you, but this is you've admitted that you're just like the rest of us. You're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. And that's not a good person, is it? No. Let's say today was the day that you actually died in the room, and you stand before God, and he opens up the books in your whole life, and he judges you by his perfect and righteous law. Is he going to find you innocent or guilty of breaking his law? Probably guilty. Should he send you to heaven? Or should he send you to hell for breaking his laws? Hell. Does that reality concern you at all? I wasn't expecting this conversation, but I mean, it's not on like the forefront of my mind at all times, but yeah, it would, it would concern me. Believe it or not, I actually love you. See, I'm a Christian and I don't want you to go to hell and, and God has made a way for guilty sinners like you and I to be saved from that wrath. Have you ever heard of what that what that way is. No. 2,000 years ago, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be born of a virgin. He was born miraculously. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned, not even once, in thought, word, or deed. In fact, everything he did was pleasing to his Father in heaven. And then he went to the cross as an innocent man because he claimed to be God, which, of course, is blasphemy. But there is an exception to that. <clears throat> While he was on the cross, he didn't just die. God the Father shows up and pours out his wrath on Jesus for our sins. For every sin we've ever done and every sin we ever will do. He paid for them all on the cross and then right before he died, he said three very important words. He said, it is finished. <clears throat> It was a legal declaration. It's actually an accounting term. It means your debt is paid, Andrew. And then he died. And he was buried in a tomb. But something miraculous happened three days later. Do you know what it is? Uh, uh, he rose from the grave. See, Jesus said ahead of time, he said, Nobody takes my life from me. I have the authority to lay it down. And I have the authority to pick it back up again. <clears throat> That's because he's God. It proved that he was God. When he came back from the dead, it also proved that what he said he did, it is finished. He can actually do that because God can back that up. Does that make sense? Yeah. He was seen by his disciples and over 500 eyewitnesses over the course of 40 days. And then he ascended in heaven. And right now he is seated at the father's right hand. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Nobody comes to the father except through me. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. 
Do you know what the word repent means? I don't, I don't know. It means to forsake your sins. You turn away from them. And then you trust that the gospel is a real offer. That Jesus Christ did, in fact, pay for your sins on the cross. You trust that what he said is true. Do you think what I've shared with you is the gospel truth or is it a lie? Uh, my honest answer, I don't I don't know. I was raised Catholic and then but that was ten years ago. And so here's what I would encourage you with. Do you have a Bible? I actually don't. You have a smartphone, right? Yeah. If you search for apps and search Bible, there's a <laughs> smartphone app called Uversion. And you can read the book of John for yourself. Thanks for bringing food. That was very thoughtful of you. Uh, Andrew, if you need some food, it looks like this person's very thoughtful. And uh, dropped some food for you. Yeah. And this um, this person obviously wasn't here for the whole conversation. So I'm going to summarize for them as well. The bad news is we've all sinned. We does all deserve the wrath to come. It would be eternity in hell. But God has made a way for guilty sinners like you and I to be forgiven through his son, Jesus Christ, who paid for... Hey, man, come on, don't be like that. Come on, that's that's so not cool. Why'd you do that? That's, that's not cool at all. That person brought in food. They had been in there multiple times. But it's when we started talking about the gospel that they had that reaction. And they uh, they terminated my character and Andrew, who we were praying for as well. Hey, man, I was... Oh, it's Andrew. Praise God. I'm so glad you're here, Andrew. I mean, he'd been in and out many times, but it was when we started talking about the gospel that they were offended and they decided to try to steal the truth from you. Thank God you'd heard it. See, I'm a missionary to gamers. This is my full-time mission. I go to games to meet people that God has set up in advance the opportunity to talk to about the gospel. I was told recently to find a higher power and keep seeing more signs and pushing it up. But the more signs I see, the more it opens my eyes. You now have all you need to know about what God has done so that you can be saved. So guys, if you'll join me in prayer for Andrew, I'd be grateful. Heavenly Father, uh, I'm very thankful for Andrew being here and being able to hear uh, the gospel. Lord, I proclaim the gospel to Andrew. He's been faithful to hear it. And Father, I pray you give him that gift of faith, that he would repent and put that faith and trust in your son, Jesus Christ, and be saved from the wrath he has earned because that wrath has been paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross. I ask this, Lord, knowing what a good and loving and awesome God you are, that you would use this silly game to get Andrew's attention so that he could hear this good news. But Father, he's in your hands, and I know that it's between you and him. I cannot do anything more than proclaim the gospel, and I'm grateful to participate in the work that you're doing. Thank you for all those faithful here as well who are praying for Andrew, and I, I hope, Lord, you are pleased and glorified through this. I ask this all in Jesus Christ's name, my King and Savior, my hero. Amen. Let's see here. Andrew says, I do appreciate you. I'm working my life away uh, at a young age, and I know I needed to hear something like this soon. Andrew. That is the wisest thing that I've heard anybody say today. I'll read it right now. Praise God. You would not be saying that if God was not at work in you. The fact that you would put aside the game and say, I I'm going to go read God's word right now. Praise God, because that doesn't happen without him being at work. We are dead. We are dead in our sins and trespasses. And so for you to say that I'm going to put this silly game aside and I'm going to go do what's important, that's a praise God. We got Romans 10, 17. So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. Amen, amen. Guys, this has been such a wonderful day to share the gospel with people. Let's get back in there. Let's see if God has any other divine appointments for us. I am so encouraged. I bet there's very few people who say that. When they get when they get the dead screen on there but we are uh let's see here looks like that's something we can 